House Republican members are huddling behind closed doors, trying to find a way to end internal division and elect a new Speaker of the House. Majority Leader Steve Scalise won the conference's nomination, but sources tell CNN he still has a ways to go from having enough votes to get the Speaker's gavel. Let's take you to Capitol Hill now with CNN Chief Congressional Correspondent Manu Raju. Manu, bring us up to speed. Where do things stand right now? Yeah, behind closed doors right now, Steve Scalise, the House Majority Leader and nominee to be Speaker of the House, is trying to salvage his bid to run this chamber amid th this paralysis that has been going on for more than a week after that unprecedented vote last week to oust Kevin McCarthy from the Speakership, facing that right-wing revolt and votes with Democrats to push McCarthy out. Now Steve Scalise is trying to get the votes, but he is simply not there. He can only afford to lose five, four votes total among Republicans. There are more than four Republicans. Republicans who are opposed are probably a dozen, maybe up to two dozen, some raising serious concerns, including some who I caught up with on their way in, saying they're not going to support Steve Scalise on the floor. They say they're going to support Jim Jordan, who Scalise beat for the Republican nomination to become Speaker, but still plan to vote for Jordan, showing that at the moment, Scalise does not have the votes. Listen. I love Steve Scalise. He's a good friend, um, but, you know, I'm also really good friends with Jim Jordan. It's a tough, tough choice for me. Uh, but right now, I think uh, Jim Jordan is closer to the magic number. I'm never going to just say, I'm a, I'm a never so-and-so. You know, we're adults. Let's go figure out how to lead. But I'm not in a uh, positive place right now with respect to Steve. Now, in this meeting, members are going up to the mic, raising their concerns. Scalise is trying to answer each of these concerns. We're told that he has pushed back or at least indicated uh, that he could do the job amid concerns over his own health. Scalise is battling blood cancer right now, but a treatable form of blood cancer. He says that he is in good condition to do that. He's also told the members he's not cutting any side deals, not making any concessions with members in order to win the speakership. So he is indicating he is not dropping out at this moment, even though there's road to the speakership at the moment it appears very very grim can he get there Scalise still believe he can unclear though when the vote would happen on the floor or if this these types of meetings behind closed doors will continue on until Scalise believes he has the votes to try to push it to the floor try to dare his members to vote against it that remains an open question here as the house remains completely paralyzed as the speakership crisis plays out uh, let's discuss with a Republican who will weigh in on that race. Colorado Congressman and Freedom Caucus member Ken Buck joins us now. He's a member of the Foreign Affairs and Judiciary Committees. Congressman, thanks so much for sharing part of what I assume is going to be a busy afternoon for you. Uh, members are right now behind closed doors with Congressman Scalise answering their questions. How come you're not there? Because well, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I have talked to Steve. I spent a half hour with him last night and had a great conversation with him. And I, I told him I would not hold up his nomination. If he gets uh, close, I will uh, support his nomination. So. You did voice some concerns about him, though. And, and you did tell my colleague, Caitlin Collins, that uh, you had more you were seeking more answers from him. On what specifically? Well, uh, for one, I want to know whether he's going to put a Ukraine funding bill on the floor. Right now we have uh, the, the idea, I guess, that we would support, have a, a supplemental bill for Ukraine and Israel. And I want to make sure that those, those bills come to the floor so members get to vote on it. You would support combining aid for Israel and aid for Ukraine? I, I would support them separately or combined. Uh, excellent. So you uh, noted yesterday that there are some seven Republican colleagues of yours that are uh, firmly against Scalise, some others, perhaps seven or so, that are undecided. Have you had a chance to speak with them? Uh, have you heard any of their concerns uh, that you may try to persuade them against? I, I have heard concerns from a number of them, and that list has actually grown now. I think Steve has probably 14 or 15 hard no's against him. Mm. Uh, I don't think he takes this to the floor. I think at some point today or, or tomorrow, uh, he makes a decision on, on whether he's going to withdraw. Do you have any clarity on what he might be offering them as incentive? I, I think just answers. I, just like I had con concerns about a Ukraine uh, and, and Israel supplemental bill, I think they have concerns about other issues and they want answers. And so, Well, for example, Marjorie Taylor Greene is concerned about his health. Uh, Nancy Mace is concerned about uh, his past links to white supremacist groups. Uh, you had voiced concern about uh, him not publicly stating that Joe Biden won the 2020 election fair and square. 
Can he persuade some of those hard nosed you think? Well, first of all, I think uh, what Marjorie is saying is really unfortunate. The man uh, has treatable cancer. He will get through that. And, and I think she has other plans for other candidates. Uh, the second concern, uh, a number of African-American leaders have stood up and, and supported Steve and said he doesn't have a racist bone in his body. And so uh, that, to me, is, is unfortunate. I think the concerns are more uh, about policy rather than the person himself. I, I want to get back to the conversation uh, we uh, should have about Israel and aid to Israel because uh, Obviously, this sort of chaos unfolding in the House uh, has frozen the body. Do you, do you have any concerns that it might delay aid to Israel, this ongoing fight over Speaker? We have not had a request from the administration, and there isn't, uh, in my uh, opinion, there isn't one in the pipeline right now. So I don't think uh, we are in danger of, of harming our relationship with Israel or Israel's ability to fend off this crisis. Let's get an update from CNN congressional reporter Melanie Zanona. Melanie, uh, there are rough estimates out there. I just heard from Congressman Ken Buck a moment ago who says there are more than a dozen hard no's against Scalise. Where do things stand right now? Well, Boris, at this moment, the prospects for Steve Scalise are very grim. He is meeting behind closed doors. He's trying to assuage these holdouts, trying to convince them that he is the right person to unify the party. But we're being told that he is failing to unify the party in there and that he is not moving the needle whatsoever at this moment. And we're actually told that there are over 20 holdouts at this moment, a list that is only growing. In fact, just to give you an example, Anna Polina Luna, she's a congresswoman, last night told us she would be behind Scalise, but she came out of that meeting today saying she she is not going to be backing Steve Scalise. So it is trending in the wrong direction for the congressman. Now, Kevin McCarthy, his, the former speaker, knows the situation all too well. Here's what he had to say. Do you think it's possible that he can get the votes? Possible. It's a big deal. He told a lot of people he's going to be up 150. Would you prefer to see Jordan at this point? No, I mean, so a little shade there from Kevin McCarthy, who has had a rocky relationship with Steve Scalise over the years. But the big question right now, Boris, is whether Steve Scalise is even going to go to the floor with a vote. There are a lot of doubts about whether that is going to happen because he does not have the votes. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to get there. And meanwhile, the House is paralyzed, all while critical issues like aid for Israel and government funding hang in the balance. And Melanie, there's also breaking news on the Senate side, new charges against New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez. Bring us up to speed on that. Yeah, so last month, the senator and his wife were both indicted on corruption-related charges, including allegations that they accepted thousands of dollars worth of bribes. But today, they were hit with even more charges. They are being accused of trying to conspire to act as a foreign agent for the Egyptian government. Now, Bob Menendez had already pleaded guilty. He is also refusing to resign from his seat in Congress. But these are very serious charges and are only going to likely grow the calls on Capitol Hill, including from Democrats, that he should step down from his seat. Boris. Melanie Zanona on Capitol Hill. Thanks so much, Melanie.